Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Langdale. Today is yet another low level walk. Lowish. It's not, but it is, yeah, it is very low. <laughs> I'm actually seeking out all the really, really low ones at the moment just to get that fitness level back up before getting out and doing the big ones. However, it is a very, very special route. To be honest with you, they're all special in their own very unique ways, but this one definitely stands out amongst all of them. So let's go and gaze upon the map and find out exactly where this special route takes us. From the old Dungeon Guild, we're going to head through the National Trust campsite before the initial climb in the direction of Blee Tarn. We'll cross the road at the top of the pass and then we'll head round on the west side of Blee Tarn through the woods before switching back to take in one of the best views in the Lake District. Then it's along the road to Blee Tarn House. It's this point that we switch back and we start to get a little bit sweaty as we head up to the first and only Wainwright of the day, Lingmoor. Then we'll head north, walking in the direction of the Langdale Pikes, where we'll see what I think is the best view in the Lake District, right here. After admiring that view, we'll head down towards Side Pike, through the squeeze, up to the summit, and then it's just a short walk back down to the pass, along the squiggles, through the campsite, and then finally back to the pub. excited. Are you as excited as I am? <laughs> this is such a spectacular route. The views up by Bleetan, out of this world, and the views up on Lingmo, out of this world. I can't decide which one I like the most. I'll let you decide. <laughs> Whew, so, I'm just starting the ascent now, and I'll tell you something now. I am very, very pleased about that because it's so cold today. Really cold, minus one in the valley, but there's a heck of a wind going on. And yeah, it's pushing down to probably about minus five. So I'm very grateful for this hill because it's gonna get a little bit of heat in both of us. All of us, you as well. <laughs> so let's get up here, zigzag all the way up, and then we'll get our first view of Bleetan and hopefully not long We'll be in the sunshine as well, which will help. So the forecast today is pretty much this, blue sky all day. Uh, in fact, this whole week is blue sky all week, except for tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast is snow. <laughs> Yay! You've probably already noticed the tip tops of the fells there have already got snow on them, but hopefully after tomorrow it'll be a nice deep dumping of it. It'll be fantastic. But yeah, back to today, it's gonna be like this. It's very windy, as I've already mentioned, and therefore very cold. So we're just gonna have to keep on moving all day. But I'm really glad because you guys are gonna get to see the views. So unlike the last walk, <laughs> up on Blackfell and Homefell, you'll actually see stuff today, which is great. Not good for photographs, obviously, because of the blue sky, <laughs> but really good for showing you guys stuff. <sighs> Look at it. So in terms of what we've got here, and I'll show you properly at the top when we get to the top of uh, Lingmoor, I'll do the usual, you know, but it's worth mentioning what we've got here. We've got Langdale Pikes right here. You can see, just and so make out uh, Paviak coming to view on the right, Harrison Stickle, Loftcrag, and Piker Stickle on the left. Right down the valley, this is Mickledon. Right down the bottom of the valley, or head of the valley, is Rosset Pike. And you've got Rosset Gill. Bowfell here, the one at the back with the snow on it, the tallest one. In front of that is the band. Then we've got the Crinkle Crags here. And this one here is Piker Blisco. That one, is the next walk, I think. Don't hold me to that, but I think it is. <laughs> okay, here we go. About to get blinded by the sun. And hopefully, have a little bit more heat going in. <laughs> oh, here you go. Woo! Hey, tell you what, I don't know if it's 
in my head because it is very early but it does feel like there's heat in that sun wow i can't see anything <laughs> completely blinded fins out there somewhere hey hernies i don't know if you can see them can you see them Okay, we're now at the top of the pass and if we were to carry on we'd end up dropping down to Bleetan House and Bleetan on the road but we don't want to do that we're going to go around to the side and go and have a look at Bleetan properly So the reason why I'm doing this route anti-clockwise is purely because of the views so Heading around to Bleed Town, up onto Lingmoor, and then back, walking back towards that view. The only trouble is the wind's coming from that direction. So on the way back, along the top there, we're gonna be walking straight into the wind, which is not ideal. Not ideal at all. And I kind of considered there for a few minutes, should I change it and walk with the wind to my back, but nah. I'm going to walk straight into the wind because I want the views. I think it's definitely worth it. It's definitely the, the best way to do it. You don't need to do it that way. You can do the, the route any which way you want, to be honest with you. It's just a real shame because this was not forecast. The wind wasn't forecast. It was forecast to be around about six miles an hour, gusting up to maybe 15, you know. Whereas this just seems to be constant 15 to 20 and icy <laughs> so I've brought the drone but i don't think i'll be getting that up it's a shame it would have been nice getting the old you know orbit shots up on the top or even here at bleed tarn but i mean you'll see it in a minute you'll see how choppy the tarn is so there's no chance of any reflection perfection today so <laughs> what a what a pity but hey i'm not mourning it does sound like i'm mourning but i'm not mourning how can i possibly mourn when i'm here amongst this environment alone apart, well apart from finn and obviously you there's no one else around yeah so let's get on to bleetan i've got a little bit of heat now which is good and then we'll look back at this view and i'll show you uh what it's like if you're not if you're not familiar with it i think a lot of you guys are familiar with these these places anyway but some of you aren't and some of you are getting ideas for for places to come this is definitely one of them and this entire route actually this whole walk is definitely something you should all come and do if you can I was just thinking then actually that it might not be as windy up on top because quite often what happens is through these little gaps here, these little notches through the passes and what have you and calls, the wind tends to speed up obviously as it's been pushed through a narrow gap. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So it might not actually be as bad on top. We'll see. I hope not. <laughs> have I made a great boob by coming this direction and this you know, anti-clockwise, and then I'm just going to be walking into like 60 mile an hour, horrendous Arctic gale. <laughs> Got these really big pine trees here. I think they're pine or spruce. I don't know what they are, but they're absolutely huge. So seeing as I'm not going to be able to get the drone up when I get to Bleetan, what I will do when I get there is show you some drone footage, some archive footage from about two years ago when I came uh, I think it was in the summer, so just imagine it's like today and it's cold. And I also managed to get a photograph at the same time, that same day, which, if you're interested, is actually available. So let me know if you are, and I will uh, 
I'll get it on my website for you. Right, let's get through these woods and get round to the other side where we can take in that view back towards Langdale Pikes properly. Look at it all. <laughs> let's go. These woods are absolutely beautiful, or at least they were. So many trees down now. I mean, look at it, it's just carnage everywhere. These were quite dense woods, you can see, obviously, there were a lot of trees here, gone. What a shame. I mean, it's just all these storms, you know, we've been battered by them. I mean, look at that, look at it up here, look at that. I mean, just huge gaps in the canopy now. I mean, you couldn't see out that way before at all. What a shame. It's a real shame. It's still nice though, still worth coming to visit. And I was just thinking then actually, even if, you know, you're not interested in doing Ling Moor, you're not into fell walking, you just want to come and walk somewhere in the Lake District, this is a perfect spot. Just come to Blee Tarn. There's a National Trust car park here, I'll show you in a minute when we get there. Where you can just park up, have a stroll around the town. Well, actually, well, you can stroll around, you can basically go uh, all the way back to where I joined this path. And then you can just walk along the road. I mean, the road is so narrow and such a slow road and fairly quiet that you'd be, you'd be safe on it. It's not like you're going to get run over by a white van or something. <laughs> well, you might do, I don't know. Here we go, Blee Tan. Nice, isn't it? I'm just trying to see if there's any swimmers. It's normally a very, very popular spot with the wild swimmers, but maybe it's just a bit choppy today. I don't think it'd be that much that much fun, would it, in uh, really windy, choppy water? I must admit, I'm quite surprised I've not seen anybody yet. In fact, thinking about it, let me think about this, I've not seen a single person at all yet. Just that car driving along the road before, that's it. That's the only sign of life that I've seen and a, and a few herdies and the Finmeister. <laughs> that's it, no humans. So yeah, this is what it, it was like. So back there, it was like this all dense, but I guess that's more exposed to the north. And that's where those really disastrous, destructive winds came in a few years ago from the north. Anyway, let's get to the viewing spot where a gazillion photographers have taken photographs, including myself. <laughs> uh, and you'll see why. Let's go and have a look. Ooh, more carnage. Ugh. Okay, a good place to go for photographs is actually down here by the fence that kind of carries on into the water because you can basically get a nice shot of, I don't think you can see it, well, maybe you can, this Scots pine here with the pikes in the background. It's lovely. Or you can go on the other side of this wall. Um, what am I doing? You can drop down to this side and get the same shot. But today is not that kind of day, as you can see, it's so choppy and there's a lot of blue sky around. So, roll the B-roll.
it's a very special place. You can see why it's so popular. You can see why so many people come here and spend time either with the cameras, getting pictures of that, because it is gorgeous, or indeed swimming in there. Why, why wouldn't you? If you're into wild swimming, what, what better place? Beautiful. And in terms of geology, it's remarkable as well, actually, because it is actually a hanging valley. So you've got Great Langdale on the other side there. So we walked up that side. This hanging valley here between uh, Lingmuir and then obviously Piker Blisco on that side. And then it drops down into Little Langdale over there. So yeah, it's a, quite a peculiar place. Very interesting. It feels like you really are deep in the heart of the mountains here as well. It's lovely. And I don't know if you can see it. You've got a side pike there. I'm very conscious of that flipping shadow. <laughs> you've got a side pike. Goes up like a dome there. And then obviously the, you've got the, the pointy bit. The pointy bit is the giant's nose. It looks like a sleeping giant. That's the forehead, the domey bit. Then you've got the big nose and then the body kind of carries on that way. Looking out to the south, we've got Weatherlam. Looking forward to doing that one, by the way. And the Southern Fells are a great route for that. You can wait and see. And then you've got uh, Great Intake and various other bits and pieces. And obviously Home Fell. I think I can kind of make out Home Fell through the gap. I might be imagining that, I don't know. <laughs> it's difficult to tell. But yeah, what a place. What an absolutely wonderful, wonderful location. Hey, people. <laughs> okay, we're now approaching the, the road. And then just behind the road there is the National Trust car park. What we're going to do is walk along the road to Bleetown House. And then you can kind of make out the ridge line that we're going to go up there. And then up to the summit, which is kind of around that bit somewhere. Come on then. So that road leads you down to Little Langdale. And then here's your car park. And then very easy to, you know, park here, have a little stroll to there and enjoy that. Quite special. Okay, quite a bit of ice around. Let's be careful here. Oh, that's looking very nice out towards Rosset Pike. I love that little bit of shadow there. There's obviously some cloud in the sky, which is promising, but, well. Okay, we are now branching off up this way here. But let me just show you very quickly Bleetan House. This is a beautiful little cottage. And I think, I believe, Wordsworth stayed here for a while. I don't know whether he lived here or whether he just had, like, had a, a creative stint here. I don't know, but it's nice. <laughs> nice, isn't it? Now then, where was I? Let's get up this path and get away from this road. It's not exactly busy, but it's just enough cars for me to worry about Finn getting squished. <laughs> Right, it's now at this point that it's all uphill. So I've not done much uphill yet on this walk. Just that little bit from the valley there in the car park. But now it is a steady away pull up all the way up to the top of Lingmoor. So yeah, it's going to get sweaty, but obviously I'm going to stop because up here by the larch trees, up near the wall, there's some absolutely stunning views looking back that way. So I'll show you those. Of course I'll show you them. I'll show you everything. <laughs> Come on. Whew. Gets quite steep fairly early on. But yeah, steep means we get to the top quicker. <laughs> but now you can start to see, you know, the views are really opening up. Obviously we've got Side Pike here, Langdale Pike's behind it. 
bow fell and what have you, but these larch trees here, honestly, when you get them in the foreground, not so much today. A little bit like the last walk up on Home Fell, the best time to come here would be um, August for the heather on Lingmuir, and then probably autumn to get the changing colours of the larch trees coming down this way. Yeah, <laughs> everything's dead now, all the heather's dead. Well, not, you know, not, not flowering. All the larch trees are just brown and boring. So, oh, and look at it now. <laughs> That's looking spectacular, isn't it? And it's looking very nice out towards Weatherlam. You've got Weatherlam there, goes up to Swirl Howe. Just make out Swirl Howe there. And now Pike of Bliss goes in view as well. You know, I've got loads of gear with me today. I've got several lenses and my drone. Loads of food for her. <laughs> Loads of water for me, and it's excessive, but it's good training. This is this is exactly what I want. Get the fitness back up, nice and steep here. Loads of weight on my back, powering up. So in the longer days, it's become easier. I absolutely love exercise. I love anything that really pushes the body. It's just wonderful. It's a wonderful feeling. And it, you know, at first, it's not when you first start doing any kind of exercise whether it's running or walking or at the gym, whatever. It's, it's awful. It's like, <laughs> it feels like punishment. But as you reach a level of fitness or strength at the gym or anything like that, you start to enjoy it. You, not only do you enjoy the feeling of exertion and the heavy breathing, which you don't at first, you notice it less, which means you notice other things more like this. It's great, look at that. So yeah, you've just got to push through it. I think really, you know, if you've got a low level of fitness, you can get pretty fit in about three months if you really hammer it. Watch the diet as well, watch the food, that's the big one. Because when I eat badly, wow, I can feel it for days. It's a little bit like alcohol now. So once upon a time, I could drink, I think we're all, a lot of us are of similar age. You used to be able to drink like a fish when you're in your teenage years, early 20s. Get up the next day and do it all again. No problem at all. Or go to work and not be affected. <laughs> now, a couple of drinks, just a couple of beers. And I can, I'm kind of wrecked the next day and I can still feel it two or three days afterwards. Same with food. If I eat something really bad, I can feel it for days. So you gotta wonder, what's going on? What is going on with your body? It must be so bad for it. It's good to be out, it's good to be sweating. <laughs> it's good to be breathing hard, getting that heart pumping, getting that muscle strong. It's a wonderful feeling. Right, I'm gonna stop wittering on now and enjoy the views. All these large trees that are coming to view here now. I'm gonna enjoy all that. The sun is obviously getting a bit higher. I'm kind of struggling a little bit to expose this properly. So if it's a bit dark or a bit light, just please forgive me. <laughs> I'm waffling, let's go. What a view. Oh, a little bit of a breather. Not a breath of wind, actually. So it must be a, a slight northeasterly today, which just means, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that notch down there. It is gonna be windy up top. Just enjoying this. Incredible view today. I must admit, <laughs> I say it in every single video, but I say it every, in every single video because I forget. I forget how beautiful a place is, but this is actually one of my favourite places. A bit further up, when we get to just below the summit, uh, the summit's called Brown Howe, uh, the actual very last bit of it is Brown Howe. Once we get up to there, or just below it, and you look back down here, this view, and you've got the wall running down towards it, it is, honestly, you'll see, it's very, very special. Right, breather over. Let's crack on. I 
like that tree there. It's kind of like mother and child. Okay, when you see the wall, you know you're not a million miles away from the top. I'm about to go through a gate. However, you also know you're about to go through a very boggy section if it's not a frosty day. So if you don't like bog, <laughs> then do it on a cold day. Oh look. I love this little bit. I love this area with this tree. And in a minute, when we drop down to here, you get this great view looking back. Okay, let me spin around. So it looks rubbish today <laughs> because what you can't really see is side pike there and obviously pikes behind it. It's difficult to see the layers. You've got all these larch trees here as well. So again, in autumn, when all these are orange, you've got the orange bracken on the side pike, orange bracken on the, on the, on the Langdale pikes as well. A little bit of cloudage, very low sun, this is a world-class view. It looks rubbish right now though. Yeah, this ice is a blessing. Let's get you through there then. Look, let's see if you can use your brain. Oh, it's a bit creaky. <laughs> Was that my knees? So yeah, ordinarily you step off that little stile and you're into this very wet area here. But fortunately, it's frozen today. Yay. That's a fine view, isn't it? In fact, I think I might like that more because you've got this larch tree, you've got the style, which is quite a nice feature, and both fell, and then these here as well, and the wall. Yeah, this is it. This is the shot. <laughs> so, like I said, not far now. Once you, ooh, <laughs> once you get to that wall there, you're looking at around about 10 minutes of up. So not long at all. It's, it's a tiny bump, this one, really. It's only a bit bigger, really, than Holmfell and Blackfell. Maybe a bit more. Maybe a bit more than just a little bit. But this view here, as we get further up, I'll show you, as we approach the summit and look back, you'll see this wall snaking down. It's very similar to the wall. In fact, I think it's better than the one that's known as the Great Wall of Lingbo that runs off towards the Langdale Pikes. I think this one is arguably be arguably better. Let's go and find out. This little narrow rocky section here. It's not long though. Surrounded by all this beautiful heather. Not so beautiful now, but like I said, come August. Whew. And indeed, this is probably one of our heatheriest hills right here in the lakes. Is that a word? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, look at it, you can see it. For as far as the eye can see, heather. And even its name would suggest it's a very, very heathery place. Lingmoor, Ling, meaning heather covered from Old Norse. So it's a heather covered moor. You're not kidding. Get here in August or winter when there's lots of snow and this place is beautiful. I mean, it's beautiful all year round, but especially in those seasons. Right, not far at all from the summit. In fact, it's just here, look. So, just getting up onto Brown How now. Brown Cow, <clears throat> over style, up onto the summit. Cairn right there. Come on, Finn, use your noggin. <laughs> Come on. Good dog. All right, here we are, on the summit of Lingbua. What I'll do is I'll do the usual, because I know you like it, I'll have a spin around and show you all the summits you can see from this fairly small bump. Let's have a look.
quite impressive, isn't it? Quite impressive indeed. In fact, not quite, it's very impressive. Right, I think what I'm gonna do, I was gonna have something to eat there. I've only got like some beef jerky today. I thought I'd give that a go. Uh, and a Marsh bar, of course, a Marsh bar duo. <laughs> wow, really pushing the boat out. But it's just a bit windy, so I think I'm gonna push on all the way down this ridge. This is a stunning ridge, by the way. This is the great wall of Ling Moor. So we'll get to that next little knobble there, look. And that's, I think it's round there. Actually, it might be a bit further on. We'll talk about it when we get there. It's a really great view looking down towards Side Pike. This is a lovely walk. Just following the fence, following the old wall. And I'm really glad I'm doing it this, this way around rather than walking up with the, the wind to my back, like I mentioned. It's, you, you get this view, I mean, look at it. You'd have to keep on turning around, having a look, which is fine, you can do that, but it's nice walking into the view rather than walking away from it. And, you know, it's only a bit of wind in the face. It's no big deal. Okay. Care needs to be taken here if you've got expensive clothing. <laughs> because you will get it snagged on this barbed wire. I've actually seen that happen to somebody. Have their coat torn there. Uh, yeah, stay away from it. Let's go up and over. So we're now on that little knobble, looking back towards the summit. Just there, I mean, it's literally five minutes. And now we get our first glimpse from this angle of side pike. And we've got Ling Moor Tarn down there, which is a fantastic little place to, to camp. I camped there back in 2012, I think it was, with my ex-wife Anne, Finn's mum. Before we got Finn, that was, that was BF, before Finn. And uh, yeah, lovely camp. Very, very cold. There was a fleeting moment of incredible light as we popped out the tent. We put the tent up. Got a brew on and then uh, came back out the tent and just saw this incredible shaft of light coming down Mickledon. It was wonderful. Ah, good times. I really do love Ling Moo. It's somewhere that I've walked many, many, many times and I have a lot of incredible memories here actually. Before Finn, since Finn, you know, with Finn. Got a little bit emotional then actually just looking at the town and thinking about that camp and you know simpler times this place really touched the nerve then <laughs> wow i've had it a few times in the lake district where i've become a little bit overwhelmed with emotion and feelings and what have you, memories. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm very, very happy with life at the moment. Life is good. I mean, look at this. Look where I am. <laughs> Been able to do this with this furry creature. It's wonderful. And obviously having you supporting me as well. It's a very, very uh, fulfilling and rewarding thing that I'm doing. It's just, you know, I'm only human. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. I know I look like an alien. <laughs> Every now and then, certain places just kind of sting a little bit, you know. Anyway, we're now getting to the point where we get a really nice clear view of Side Pike and the wall running down. And in August, it's where you get the shots. I actually got one a couple of years ago and I'll put it on the screen when we get there and I'll show you where I stood. I'm not very happy with the photograph. It was a bit blown out, the sky was quite light. So the sky was blown out. It's one of those times where I probably could have done with some um, ND filter, an, an ND filter or ND grad or something like that. But I don't do filters. It's just more, more gubbins to carry. <laughs> I'm already carrying enough, so I don't bother. And yeah, I don't very often need it, but that time I did. And you'll, you'll see when I put the picture on the screen in a minute. 
I don't know if you can see that. It's seven minutes past 12 and it already feels like the sun's going down. Very, very soft sun. I mean, it's just spin you around. You can see how low it is in the sky. It's kind of there, I think. Yeah, there. So it's obviously casting this beautiful, soft glow. I reckon in about an hour's time, the light's going to look even more amazing. So the question is, what do I do? <laughs> Actually, no, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to push on to side pike, get through the squeeze. I'm looking forward to that. Love that, that um, little obstacle. And then go up to side pike and just perhaps hang around there while the sun gets a little bit softer, a little bit lower and see what, see what happens, see if it lights up the pikes nicely. This is a nice view, you get to this point here. Um, we can see back down to uh, Bleetan again, Wetherlam, everything else. Lovely. Isn't it Finn? It's lovely! <laughs> She's just like, give me the goddamn mountain Maltesers and shut your trap, human. Here we go. Ah, oh, look at it. <laughs> It's just a wondrous view. Flipping windy. So I think I was stood down here somewhere, taking that shot. Let's head down there. Okay, I think it was actually just about, let me see, about here. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen now what I took. And you know, all the foreground heather was just blooming. It was proper full August. It was wonderful, but as you can see, the sky was completely blown out. I actually took a whole lot of shots and stacked them. So I did like a um, you know, faster shutter speed and what have you to bring the sky down. And then the idea was to stack them in, in Photoshop. I did that, it looked awful. It just did not look good at all. Wow, Fairfield's looking interesting. It's got this weird cloud over it. But the summit's lit up. Hmm, nice. So, you know, we are getting some cloud on the landscape now, which is good. If that all starts to build up a little bit more, get rid of some of that blue, it could be great. Hang on, we've got jet action. I hate those jets, but I love them. I hate them, but I love them. <laughs> so yes, anyway, I'll probably need to come back at some point and do this shot. What I'd like to do, what, what would have been perfect, is having sun here lighting up the heather, and then sunlight, like very low sunlight hitting the, the pikes and the band and Bowfell and what have you, and side pike, bits of them, not all of it, just bits, slices of light. And then just black, ominous, brooding clouds over the mountains. No blue sky, no sun coming in that direction. It was all wrong. It was the wrong time of day. Everything was wrong. <laughs> it was all wrong. That being said, it was a wonderful uh, evening. It's nice. I just ran up from Elta Water with my camera, nothing else, no filming, and spent uh, a couple of hours up here just enjoying it. It's lovely. <laughs> and just bombed it back down again in the dark. Ow! That was my toe. Oh, I just stubbed my toe. The, the toe. Okay, let's head on, continuing to follow this wall um, until we get to the point where we get to the style before side pike that's another nice view it's it's fun it's lovely a little bit closer to side pike it looks big you've got the wall leading right down to it that's a, a very very nice uh, composition if you're into photography if you're not it's just nice to look at with dim eyes let's go and have a look it's just occurred to me that lingmu was actually the second video i ever did Hiking vlog number two. And I was actually, I think I called it Heather Heaven or something like that. You get that big reveal. A bit more of the pikes showing. And as we get down to this bit here where the path separates, we get to see side pike properly. There we go. Look at that. <laughs> Wonderful. Love that wall. So what you can do, you can go down there. I wouldn't recommend it. Your best bet is to walk down this path here. I don't even know if you can see it. I'm just gonna change the settings so you can see what I'm doing. Is that any better? 
it's a little bit steep on the side here. Keep going, Finn. That's it. Good dog. So, obviously, <laughs> you don't want to be sliding down into that. But it's definitely better than that other way. I think this is terrible filming because I'm trying to watch where my feet are going and not the back of the screen because there's been so many times that I've been looking at the back of the screen and then just nearly plummeted to my death. Right, so here we go. So we switched back and we're heading down towards that stile and that's a, a nice place to, to stop and rest. Actually, out the wind as well now. I think, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to bag off here, get some um, beef jerky on the go, get some food for Finn and uh, carry on in about 10 minutes. Okay, Finny, you uh, go for a bit of scranage. I know I am. Okay, semi-satiated. I think we'll push on now. Finn, you need to go this way. <laughs> She's trying to get through the tiniest little gap down there, look. You need to go here, look. I thought you were smart. Down you go. It's a big drop. Go on. I know, that's what I mean. <sighs> yes, yeah, so now we can push on, get over to Side Pike, and we're going to go through the squeeze. <laughs> Should be interesting after Christmas. Oh, back out into the sunshine again as well. It's lovely. It's amazing, just out, just being out of the sun there for, you know, five minutes. I don't know why we didn't stand here, actually. <laughs> and just have the food here in the sun. What an idiot. I think it's just that view, you know. <laughs> it is surprising how much heat there is in that winter sun. Incredible. I got quite cold there, standing there then. Right. I'm going to film forward now because this is one of the best bits and you don't want to see me. You want to see that. What a view. Oh, look at that hoodie there. I don't know if you can see it. But that is a fantastic view with the wall here, side pike, and then obviously Rosset Pike there as well, Langdales. Ooh, and this cloud, you know, it's all starting to look a little bit interesting. And I've just put my camera away as well to get through the squeeze, so damn it. Hey, hoodie. So when you're up there, looking back down on Side Pike, it looks like nothing. But as you approach, you can actually see it is quite a substantial bit of rock. The town's looking lovely now, that glistening on the water. I absolutely love that. Uplifting. Ah, oh, look at that. What a view. Go on, Finn, you go first. Ladies first. That's it. Quite stiff, this one. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> At the squeeze. And it's really hot here. God. I'm baking. Isn't that a magnificent view? So I've got to squeeze through that gap there and hopefully not get stuck. I think it's can Finn do it. Easy. That's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. A little bit of adventure there. Yeah, I did do it twice. 
<laughs> but the thing is, did you spot the deliberate mistake? Yeah, the problem I have is not me getting through that gap, it's my bag. Because it's so deep, it's a camera bag, so it's very, very deep. It struggled to get through there then. <laughs> so anybody else, if you come with a normal bag and you are kind of normal size, no problem at all getting through there. Obviously, if you're a little bit on the large side, I mean, you'd have to be pretty damn big to not get through there. This bag, I have to say, has been the source of many a almost tumble. Because it's so deep, because it sticks out from my back a long way, I mean, you can see it in the videos, the centre of gravity is not great. So I swing around like that, it's like, whoa, it pulls me over. So yeah, it's been a few times I've almost fallen off stuff. Anyway, almost at the top of Side Pike. It doesn't take long at all. This is the only way up and that, well, it's two ways up. This way and the way we're going to be going down, that's it. You can't approach many other angle because it's just so steep, just big crags. Let's go and have a look. Let's go and sit down, have a marsh bar. This is such a good little bump. I love it, I love Side Pike. It's no effort at all. You know, coming in from Great Langdale, up the way I came this morning, and instead of crossing the road like I did, you just turn left and come up here. All right, here we are on the summit of Side Pike. So this is, in effect, the nose. The giant's nose, the sleeping giant's nose. <laughs> I might actually have some drone footage of up here from a previous visit, so if I have, I'll put it on the screen now. If not, if I can't find it, then I won't. <laughs> but look at it. Lingamua, Bleetan, path round, and obviously we came from down the valley there, out of view at the moment. Wow. Oh, it's cold. <laughs> this is out the wind, is it, here? Yeah. Well, a bit more around here, let's have a look. Finn normally finds the out of wind spots. It's nice and sheltered here, on the floor actually, right on the dog shelf. <laughs> come on, Finn. Come here, let's go and get some food. Kind of looks a little bit like sheep poo. <laughs> That's why she likes it. Cheers. Don't you dare. Okay, sugar has been injected into the bloodstream. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna head down, you know. I've kind of been umming and ahhing about staying up a little bit longer because, you know, there's shadows appearing on the, on the various crags and what have you, but I don't know. I think no matter what happens, because of all this clear sky, it's blue at the moment, it might be pink later on. It's not, it's not my bag. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably head back down offside pike, down to the call, down to the pub, get a pint. That's probably gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes, I think. So while that's happening, there could be interesting light and interesting shot opportunities along the way, but can I be bothered waiting, hanging around? No, I can't, no. I'm done, I've enjoyed it today. So let's get on. I'll tell you what, it's amazing how much snow has melted off the top of the pikes today. That had a, a definite dusting this morning, around about the same as what Bofell's got at the moment, and it's almost all gone. So like I said, it'll be very interesting to see how much it puts down tonight. <laughs> Straight back out into that icy chill. That went through my skin to my bones. Okay, back past the path that takes you down to the squeeze. We're going down this way towards that. Now there's a lovely larch tree here, you might be able to see it just here, and you can see it from the pub as well, right down the bottom. It's lovely, iconic, and 
you can definitely get some nice shots of that again in the autumn. Nice, it could be squelchy around here as well, but because it's so cold, it's all frozen. Wonderful. <laughs> I need to be careful around here because it's around this point that you can go a little bit wrong. Yeah, here we go. Got to get on the other side of the wall on the right hand side, the north side. If you're on the south side, that's when it all goes a little bit weird. <laughs> round and round we go. <laughs> just wait for me, Finn. Let me do it first. Let's just jump down that bit there. A bit easier. All right, so the path eventually kind of levels off a little bit. It's a bit more friendly, not that it's not friendly, <laughs> but you know what I mean. That means we are, <laughs> excuse me, very close now to the, the road where I was this morning. Now, I've not mentioned it today. Well, I mentioned it very briefly because I stubbed it. I've not mentioned my toe, and that can only mean one thing. I haven't felt it at all. Yay! Go on, you go. Here we are. It's kind of hard to see because it's all in shadow. Let me get down into the shadow and I can show you. Well, you'll be able to see exactly where you are then. So you can see Bleetan, and hopefully you can see some people there. That's basically where I crossed this morning. So I came up here, that's where we're going down now into the valley. So we came up and crossed the road and round Bleetan. Let's just take a shortcut. <laughs> that was close. That was very, very close. The thing that's lit up there in the sunshine, that is the pub. That's where we're going, the old Dungeon Gill. I know we've been in there on a previous video, but it's the most obvious place and uh, it just makes a lot of sense to go in there. As always, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed the walk. I hope you've enjoyed Finn, the views, not so much my waffle. <laughs> As I've mentioned already, the route is in the description. A clickable link i always forget to make it public so i do apologize just drop us a message in the comments and let me know if it's uh, if it's not set to public because i just do it every time sorry and uh, yeah i'll see you back on the next one which i believe is going to be pika blisco so keep an eye out for that in the meantime let's go and have a pint all of us yeah.